All right. Good morning. Please have a seat. The matter before the court this day is the matter of City of Keene versus James Cleveland et al. If I could have counsel identify themselves and their clients for the record. Plaintiffs. Your Honor, Robert Deedle of Gallagher, Callahan, and Gartrell on behalf of the City of Keene. Your Honor, I'm here, John Meyer, on behalf of the um, defendants. The two defendants that are present today are uh, Garrett Ian sitting next to me and uh, Ian Friedman back in the courtroom. Yes. Thank you. Charlie Bauer also for the city. Thank you. Uh, the scope of uh, the proceedings today is really, as far as I'm concerned, directed towards events that have taken place after October 1st of 2013. Uh, and unless counsel have, have a, a different request, I know that it was the plaintiff's uh, request initially to limit the scope of proceedings to things that have, had occurred prior to uh, that time that was the subject of three days of evidentiary hearings back in 2013. But uh, it's my intent just to have evidence related to things that have occurred after those hearings. Uh, but the, our counsel intend to present it, it, any evidence regarding events prior to October 1st of 2013? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, are plaintiffs, is plaintiff ready to proceed? Yes. Your Honor. If I may, before we call our first witness, I'd like to just take a minute to briefly touch on where we are. Since we were here two years ago, We've received clear guidance from the New Hampshire Supreme Court that I believe will frame our discussion today and is in keeping with the instructions that we just received. And that's specifically that this court has the equitable power to grant injunctive relief when there are significant governmental interests at stake, as there are here. With that in mind, it's our position that the record to date, what was established at the three prior evidentiary hearings, and the testimony that we're going to address today will demonstrate that the city has at least three such significant governmental interests. And those are keeping the peace on the streets, ensuring that the parking enforcement officers can do their job, which is municipal enforcement of ordinances, and providing a safe work environment for city employees. It's our position that those interests are deserving of protection and should result in a narrowly tailored injunction. So with that in mind, we're going to be calling the two parking enforcement officers today, and I'd like to start with Linda Desero. Linda, if you can approach the stand. Attorney Mar, did you want to make a brief statement? I, I don't, Your Honor, uh, but I, I do want to raise one point, which I've raised with Attorney Deedle uh, earlier, which is it seems to me it would, it would considerably focus um, the proceeding and focus the testimony if we had um, some under, I mean, some understanding as to what specific equitable relief the city is seeking. Um, as, as Attorney Deedle said, that's the issue before the court. Um, and I guess, again, it remains unclear to me as to what type of equitable relief is being requested. Um, I would want to potentially, that would potentially frame some of my questions to the witnesses. Uh, so it would be helpful to have that at least as a proposal um, prior to, to starting the evidentiary part of the proceeding. I take it you're, I, and, and I may be jumping to what, what you're going to argue, but I think the, the way that you framed it was really that it would be in the, within the court's discretion to determine what exactly, if, if relief was going to be granted, what the scope of that relief was going to be. But in the past, the city has made a specific requests. It narrowed what was initially requested to, to something more limited. Are you prepared to, to lay out what the city's specific request is? Yeah, there, we're not trying to hide the ball, Your Honor. Um, your, your summary is consistent with our position, which is that at the end of the day, we feel that the court needs to do an equitable balancing here and figure out what an appropriate injunction is. But we, of course, have a recommendation, and we believe that 10 feet um, separation would be an appropriate distance back where the respondents can engage in all the activities that we've discussed, but would provide a certain amount of safety and separation to diffuse the things that are implicating those three governmental interests that I addressed. 
Does that answer your question, Attorney Myers? It does, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney Deedle. So, Linda, if you could approach the stand. And if you'd raise your right hand, do you swear the testimony you're about to give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And be seated. Can you please state and spell your name for the record? Uh, my name is Linda DeRusso, D-E-S-R-U-I-S-S-E-A-U-X. -S -S and you prefer to go by Lynn? Yes, we have two Lindas in the office. Right. Um, Lynn, to refresh the record, I think everybody here is largely familiar with what you do for the city, but could you just very briefly describe what your position is? I work in the parking services and um, enforce the parking ordinances. Then, as I think you just heard me say, um, the purpose of our hearing today is to bring the court up to speed on what's happened since October 2013. So I'd like to start with a video um, that you're the subject of, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. And Your Honor, at this time, um, we have a video prepared. I've discussed this with Attorney Meyer. I believe he's prepared to stipulate that this was a video that was produced by his client. Um, and I have copies on CD to mark as exhibits. Any objection? You're talking about the Freeman. Yeah, the one we can I have no objection on it. Uh, perhaps, and, and you're going to offer that as a full exhibit? Yes. Any objection to it being marked as a full no. exhibit? And why don't we make that, why don't we start with one for purposes of these proceedings, just to not complicate things and go back to the numbering system we had a couple of years ago. We'll, we'll make this plaintiff's exhibit one for purposes of the hearing. Thank you. All right, so then I'm going to play this whole video. It's about four minutes long, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Here threatening to steal people's cars. 
That's her. That's what she does. Yeah. And that's stealing people's cars. That's what her job is. Do you have a good memory of that video, of, the, of what occurred there? Yeah. I take it it made an impression on you? Mm-hmm. Can you tell us, when did this happen? Last summer. And... Sorry, when? Can you, can you repeat your answer, please? Last summer. Can you describe in your own words generally what was going on, what happened? I know, I know we just watched the video, but if you could provide a brief summary. I was just on my way down to Lower Maine but by the college to uh, check the meters. So what time of day would you say this was? Probably just before noon or just after between 11 and 1. And the, who took the video? Who, t who, yeah, was, who was the, if you could identify who the person was that was filming the video. Ian Bernard. And do you see him in this room? Yes. Can you identify him for the record? Yeah. Yes, he's standing behind the camera. We talked about personal safety, keeping the peace on the streets. Can you describe how you felt when you saw Mr. Freeman approaching you? Yeah. Dread, deep dread. Why do you say dread? Because it always transpired into all this negative energy and and verbal assault and not being able to really express yourself and in my position is uh, it can be difficult. Early on at the beginning of the video we heard Mr. Freeman say something about um, you had been playing games before he took that. Was there an interaction right before this that's not shown on the video? Well, he was on one side of the street, and I decided to cross to the opposite side just to stay away from him, to keep some distance, so I wouldn't have to go through that. You, we saw you turning back and forth. Um, did you feel trapped? Oh, yes. Yeah. What about confined? Did you feel you couldn't get away? Yes, because there were two people filming. And if you could, since we didn't really see the other person, could you describe what the other person was doing? He had an iPad and he was appeared to be filming me too and being opposite of Mr. Bernard. Did, it, did you think he was working with Mr., Mr., Mr. Freeman? They were conversing, so I assumed that they were together, yes. I noticed that most of the video was a discussion of Mr. Freeman trying to talk with you. Mm -hmm. um, about how far away from you was he? At any given time, I would say probably, well, sometimes we're close, 
within 10 feet and other times beyond. I noticed you crossed the street during the video. Mm -hmm. um, and it sort of looked like you were almost rushing to get away. Mm -hmm. I was. Um, is, that, is that a fair description that you were rushing to get away? Yes. Has that happened before or, or since October 2013 being followed in the street like that? Yes. And can you focus on cars coming and things of that nature when you're being followed? I do because I want to take my focus off of what's being, I'm being followed or pursued in some way. So yes, I do pay attention to that for a couple reasons. And I've been doing this for an, uh, a, number, a number of times, too many to count. When this sort of thing is going on, um, and I, I'm going to call it harassing, yelling, being followed, yeah, I think the witness of the question is, the questioner is, is testifying at this point. I'm happy to rephrase the question, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, you just heard me saying how I would interpret it, I guess. How would you interpret his conduct? I would, it's very offensive. And I don't, I'm not referring to language use. I'm just using uh, the body language. Um, the, the words, the looks, that kind of thing, I, I, I feel like I have to defend myself and, and, and in order to do that, I have to get away from it because that's my only defense. At that point, I want to back up to a specific section here because um, we couldn't always hear, I think, exactly what you were saying. So I'm going to show it to you and then ask you if you could tell me what you were saying. Okay. Earlier, trying to play like she was going to run across the street, but then didn't, and now she's turning around this way, and now she's turning around again. Don't you feel kind of silly doing that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Silly to the max. Silly, silly. Do they pay you to walk back and forth like that? What did you just say there? I believe it said, I, I asked you not to speak to me. And did he comply with that request? Mm. No. Well, I appreciate you asking, but you're a government official, so you're subject to being talked to. Part of the, uh, All right, sorry, I part of the, uh, <clears throat> the I'm Constitution not. of the United States. The Constitution. And what were you saying there? I was saying I've had enough. How many times did you have to say it? Several. I notice you're sticking your arm out as if to physically block him. Right. What were you trying to do there? Just enforce my point that I, I want you to, I've had enough, enough. By that point, how far would you say he is from you? I would say probably within 10 feet. Would you say two arm lengths? Wait. No, I, don't I think she's. I think he's. This is the early now. Oh, it's questions. I'll withdraw answer. the question. Did you feel he was in your personal space? I felt that he was. He either was or he was going to be, and and that's the same. <coughs> feeling to me of dread.